Um, I'd briefly like to just uh, outline what FDF does, uh, some considerations that have influenced our work on transport, uh, talk a little bit about our flagship brand, which is our fivefold environmental ambition, and some of the issues we're thinking about in terms of um, seeking to review that ambition uh, during the course of this year. So the FDF, as I said, represents the UK food and drink industry. Our core priorities are food safety and science, health and well-being, sustainability and competitiveness. And some of the issues that we've had to think about in devising our commitments around transport um, is that historically the business costs of transport have been relatively small. That, of course, is now changing quite rapidly with the increase in fuel costs. Um, as a result, transport has tended to pick up the tab for inefficiencies in other parts of the business, such as order management, where there is a last-minute change of order, a vehicle is commissioned just to take that delivery out to store or, or to regional distribution depot. Um, most food manufacturers actually use third-party hauliers for their transport. Very few actually have their own fleet. That's quite different to some other parts of the uh, food chain. Um, of course, there is quite a bit of variability in the merchandising units, the roll cages and dolly sizes that retailers use, and that in turn, if you like, creates a challenge for issues around sharing transport and that sort of thing. And of course, morning deliveries are still the norm as far as retail outlets are concerned, and that in turn creates peak demands further up the supply chain, which have to be managed. So the flagship brand we have on environment is called the Fivefold Environmental Ambition, which we launched uh, just over two years ago. We publish update reports once a year. The last one was published in December. We focus on five key impact areas. Um, in addition to transport, that's carbon, waste, packaging and water. Our transport ambition is to embed environmental standards in our transport practices to achieve a combination of fewer and friendlier food transport miles and also in turn to contribute to the government's food industry sustainability strategy target which is for the food chain to reduce the external impacts of food transport by 20% by 2012 compared to 2002. To take this ambition forward we launched a checklist and clause for greener food transport in July 2008. The checklist is based on 10 best practice points and the clause embeds the principles of our fewer and friendlier food miles approach into the contracts our members have with third party hauliers. So the checklist looks something like this, simply 10 best practice points ranging from maximising vehicle loading, looking at modal shift from, from road to rail, from road to ship, looking at driver training, vehicle maintenance, etc. What have we actually achieved so far since we launched that um, just under two years ago? We've got 40 of our members who've signed up to the uh, fewer and friendlier food miles approach with a combined turnover of 15 billion pounds. All signatories with own fleets have now implemented our checklist into their operations and at least one third of signatories who use third party hauliers have embedded the clause into their contracts with those hauliers. Just briefly um, look at a few examples of what our members have actually been doing. Um, Appetito, the company Appetito, have been seeking fuel savings by uh, replacing uh, the trailer fleet with more aerodynamic versions, and that is saving about 4% on fuel. They're also looking at using double deck trailers. They're also been looking to replace all their tractor and rigid units with the new Euro 5 format vehicles, which produce significantly lower emissions. Um, also, they've been uh, employing a full-time driver trainer uh, to look at uh, driving up standards in terms of safety and efficiency, and also um, investigating better IT-based transport planning. Another example is General Mills. They've interestingly um, organised for the shipment of their products which come from their no European factories in northern Spain and the south of France. They now reach the UK almost entirely by sea. 90% um, movement is now by sea and that's saving an incredible over 2 million uh, road miles a year. Another example is Nestle. They've done quite a lot of work on transport, particularly around um, the issue of collaborative distribution. They've actually managed to crack a, 
an age-old problem in the food industry of actually working with competitors. They actually work with United Biscuits on sharing their transport. And interestingly, they've also started a program working with uh, retailers, in particular Asda, uh, on the same basis. And they've obviously managed, by that collaboration, removed quite a lot of kilometres of uh, road miles a year. They've also regionalised their delivery network, uh, which has reduced the distance uh, their products travel and uh, has enabled lorries to carry more stock. They've also um, integrated transport operations between their, their serial, uh, serial partners, which is the part of Nestle, which is a collaborative company between Nestle and General Mills, which makes breakfast cereals, and that in turn has produced efficiencies for the company overall. Um, also using careful loading patterns to reduce wasted space on vehicles, um, thereby increasing lorry loads. Again, that's increasing the tonnage which is carried per vehicle. And trailers travelling from factories to distribution centres are carrying on average two more tonnes than they did in 2006. Premier Foods um, have also uh, tackled this issue. They've set up an internal steering committee to develop a more integrated and aligned approach to transport operations within the company and to share best practice among the various divisions. Um, they've actually been looking at improving vehicle load fill. Um, they've actually been investing in new vehicles, uh, new double deck vehicles, and also um, looking at replacing tractor units um, with improved miles per gallon performance and improved aerodynamics. This is all improving um, if you like, getting more for less out of fuel usage, um, which is quite important. Um, Warburton's, uh, the bakery company, interestingly, have set themselves some internal targets. They actually want to reduce their fuel use by 10% by uh, 2014, based on 2008 levels. And they're also aiming to achieve, achieve zero growth in their food miles, based on their food miles total for 2009. And ways that issues that they're looking at is again looking at double decks to add capacity to their fleet, looking at alternative fuels, uh, compressed natural gas vehicles have been trialled and they're also taking on board an electric vehicle on a lease basis. Um, ve uh, vehicle driver training obviously is an area they're looking at, optimising their routes that they travel and basically looking to a more fuel efficient future. Young's, the seafood company, uh, have also been working to implement the FDF checklist and they've been uh, essentially conducting an internal audit of their transport operations and already they've seen a 7.2% increase in fuel efficiency and looking at uh, optimising vehicle fuel, vehicle fuel again as well as part of their activities. Some of the... Um, Specific issues that we'll be focusing on as we go through um, to review our fivefold ambition, um, whether we can develop a harder target. At the moment, our target is a qualitative target, whether we can develop something more quantitative. That in turn feeds into the need for a, agreement on methodology as to how you allocate transport carbon, particularly when there is a shared arrangement with third party hauliers, and agreement on a suitable proxy, whether that be fuel use or tons delivered. Um, worth bearing in mind that work with DEFRA on the food industry strategy showed that actually the main external costs of food transport were congestion, infrastructure damage and accidents. Uh, CO2 was rather uh, lower down the scale but of course the significance of that is increasing. Just finishing off, um, some of the broader considerations we need to think about, the Copenhagen Accord, um, the issue of the court hold commitment, DEFRA's food 2030 strategy which is very much supply chain focused. Uh, the changes in the DEFRA delivery landscape and of course the big one of all is the uncertainty of what the uh, new government will have in terms of priorities and we know obviously the spending cuts that will be just around the corner. Thank you very much for your attention.